Hi. Hi. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the big, big picture, picture where we help, we help you see, see, think, and act big. And today we are in Mizanin Cafe and we have a wonderful guest who we've been, um, we, we recently learned from him, you know, about him and then we're so excited about him. So we just, Dave and I we decided to like get him on the show. Um, and his name is Fibo Lim. Hi, Fibo. Hello, good evening. Good, good evening, <laughs> good morning. Um, whatever time the, this show would, 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 would be downloaded to your phone. Um, yeah, uh, how are you? Let's, let's start with that. Well, um, very great, very honored to be here, um, interviewed by both of you. And uh, it's my first time to be interviewed through a podcast and I'm very happy because yeah. um, people right now are really adapting to podcasts and just, this is a good opportunity to share to the world what podcast is and how it can help them, no? Like, for example, they have a message or they want to hear from successful stories. Because right now, I mean, before, we use radios. And right, right now, radios are, well, it's negative, you know, more on negative news. And more I think on, podcast yeah. is a way to distribute positive information out there. Yeah. And yeah. also, our, we were thinking of really, you know, hitting on people who... Most people, you know, the the whole society, especially in Cebu, actually, we're we're interviewing a lot of Cebuanos who right. are who are, you know, we, we get listeners as well from Manila and all across the globe. Sure, mainly. yeah. And uh, speaking of positive message, you know, we, the reason why we we thought that like our our listeners, our audience would be interested about you because you're number one, you're so young, and then you've. You've been really oh, been successful. How old are you, by the <laughs> yeah. way? Yeah, yeah so I just um, celebrated my birthday yesterday, so I'm 23 right now. Oh, happy oh, birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you. Where's your cake, Dave? His cake, Dave. <laughs> okay, you know, uh, yeah, and then, you know, I heard about you from Passion TV. Yeah, yeah. And I saw you, and from that point, I said, like, we should get you in the show because you're, you're talking, about, talking about, you know, uh, establishing your, your own company and your own business and... Your story is also very interesting. How how early did you started you know um, dreaming about, about it? All right. Yeah. yeah. So um, since then, I think I grew up as an it's it's my blood as an entrepreneur. Well, my parents um, were were not in the entrepreneurial side. They were employees for right. um, thirty to forty years, and uh, my mother. Told me oh, that. Actually here, by yes, the way. actually Please here. Hello. Uh, <laughs> she's just, it's just Be first careful time. what you say. <laughs> it's her first time watching me here. So awesome. I just wanted to bring her so that he would have an idea on what All I'm right. doing. So anyways, um, my mother, um, when I was young, I wanted to become successful because um, my classmates had those uh, dream life. So I asked my mom where, um, Ma, what is the secret to become successful? And my mom said that uh, to become successful, you need to study hard, have good grades so that you will be able to graduate with high honors and right. able to apply in a multinational company. Right. And I had that mantra since I was young. So I did well in school. But eventually, um, I had this you know, opener in the middle of college where I thought that the industry right now has changed. Okay? Mm -hmm. Meaning, if you want to become successful, it's not all about certification. It's not all about having becoming smart in school. It's about having what you call a discarte. And uh, right. right now, I think... I like that. Yeah, we are in the information age. Meaning, information right now, it's not just based in school, but in what you know around the world. Right. Okay, so meaning if we know more in this industry, we have a competitive advantage from other people. And I want this to be clear because we have multimillionaires just because of Facebook, YouTube, and all these social media platforms. And because the industry has changed, they think that, Job opportunities has closed down, but eventually it opens to more doors out there. Right. Yeah. So that is my, that what opened my mind. Uh, I thought there were only limited opportunities because of but, technology. But who, who actually yeah, introduced triggered? you to that? Yeah. Yeah. So what happened is, you know, when I was young, I was selling all this stuff and I entered network marketing, I entered traditional business, right. and eventually I failed and uh, uh, nearly lost everything. So, what happened is since I had how no old money, are you? How how old are you when you when, you, when yeah, yeah. it feels like you're talking to a 30, 45 year old guy right, now? So, how old um, are you when you, when you? That time when I discovered the internet market, I, I was around tw 19, 20 year ish. Yeah, recently, recently, so, recently, wow. Yeah, and uh, I was looking for a way to make money online. So I searched, went to Google, type make money online, and go to YouTube and all this stuff. And then from there, 
I, when I searched Make Money Online, there were like a billion search results there. Right. And I opened it up and eventually I was supposed to quit because I thought it was very difficult. And it made me realize that information, right now we are not in the lack of information. Information is everywhere. And the thing is, because information is everywhere, we tend to be overwhelmed and see to ourselves na, ay, hindi ko kaya because of this, because of that. And from there, I took a step, I, I took a step backwards and I told myself that I don't want to learn it by myself. I want to learn it with a mentor. So when everybody asks me right now, how, how, why is it, why did I do this so fast? It's because I had a mentor to shortcut my success for me. And, uh, I realized two things because there's only two things where you can learn. First is you learn from your experience, meaning you experience the failures, you experience everything by yourself firsthand. Second is you learn from other people's experience. And so I had that, I had two choices. And what I did is I looked for mentors who have done it because success leaves clues. All you have to do is just to model what works. So basically that's how I did it. I invested time, I invested money, I invested all my resources to look for a mentor and follow mentors. And eventually it was, I was able to shortcut yeah. my success What's as well. your guiding principle when finding a mentor? Well, yeah. did, did you just like found it online or did someone refer it to you? Yes. Yeah, so, and what specific industry are we talking about here, right? We're talking about internet marketing. That's right, yeah, internet so marketing. That. How did yeah, you so find those people? In looking for mentors, at first, it would be difficult for you to look for mentors because um, you don't, there's no specific criteria that I can say, nah, that's the mentor. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can easily, the only thing I, I advise for everyone is look for a person where you idolize and you resonate with. Because mm -hmm. in the online marketing world, there are a lot of you know gurus out there and honestly, they're good, but I don't resonate with them. So I learned, I learned this from a YouTube video and actually one of my mentors, he told me that if you want to become successful, you just have to look for just one mentor and go all in. Right. And that's what I did. I looked for one mentor, went all in, learned from him. And from there, I became a better person. I learned from a lot of things. And then that's the time where I look for other mentors as well. Wait, yeah. When you say go all in, what does that, what does that mean? Can you give us like an idea? What? Yeah. All right. So going all in for me is like, Okay, not everyone has the privilege to have a mentor. Okay, some good people are not willing to teach. Well, some good people as well are also willing to teach, but unfortunately, they, it has costs, time, money, and uh, one of my mentors has costs. So, meaning I invested huge amounts of money to learn from different people. Right. So, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Just follow up with that. No, uh, you you basically found a mentor you you chose one yep is it okay for you to share it or you know yeah. share it to our audience who yeah, that sure. mentor was so my one of my mentors i really follow this is the primary is peng jun he is one oh, of peng the jun. people i follow but so it doesn't i don't only limit to one mentor i also learn from others as well mm. so there are a lot of mentors like for example russell bronze mostly international mentors right. but i started in the philippine mentors which is bo sanchez chinkitan all this stuff so i i i, I had when i learned from them I had that mission that I want to become a mentor to other people as well. I want awesome. to become the inspiration to other yeah, people. I as like well. that. You mentioned mentors, right? But these are these are not physical mentors. Yep. You you never had a physical mentor who actually guided you. Hey, hold your hand. Hold your yeah. hand. You Tap know, your back. This is how yeah. you do it or not. You you yeah. just had learn everything through online. Yep. So I I want I wanted to have that personal mentor, but yep. unfortunately, I'm still in the process in. In, in grabbing that personal mentor because, you know, having a personal mentor is very, very difficult. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I just want to share to everybody that it doesn't mean if they don't have a personal mentor, it's an objection for them yeah. not to become it's successful. It's not a limitation at all. Because we're, we're the same. I don't have someone to really guide me every day, step by step. I just have the mission. I just have the drive to find ways to be able to achieve my goal. So FIBO here is actually an epitome of someone who actually learned from online well, I may personally also learn all of my skills possibly with, with my yeah, business right now. It's yeah. it's because of online, right? I've learned from the skill, YouTube, and all those resources. So it's amazing how you shared because I, when I first listened to you, I thought you had a physical mentor yeah. who ta taught you that. So And you've mentored, mentioned Peng Jun. 
Peng Jun or Peng John. I don't, I don't know how he pronounce it. But he's not from the Philippines. He's yeah, actually right. a Malaysian, right? Yep. Right. And uh, if you, you might have already seen him online. You might Facebook. have seen his ad. uh, ads, right? So, <laughs> yeah. so and I, I've heard he's not even like he her, his courses are not even cheap. So yep. uh, like, how, what made you actually? So you paid for him basically. Yep. I, so yeah. how can you share to us how much you right. shared? So um. Total, I invested more than a million pesos in Just programs. for his lessons, right? Yes, courses. <laughs> and not just his, but also other people as well. Like, how how can uh, a person in the right mind actually do that? Yeah, so uh, I was, I grew up, my, my you know, I, I've, I grew up in a very conservative family and a very thrifty family and what you call very tehik because I'm, an, I'm a Chinese. Well, I'm, I know how to save, but we're not taught how to really start a business and grow a business as well. So it was a difficult um, leap for me because you know investing a hundred thousand in just an online course you can yeah. even feel yeah, you can it. even I don't know if you can download it or yeah, crack it right you know? right so I just you know um, that's what differentiates from successful and unsuccessful people because successful people invest in their knowledge because before I started doing all this stuff I, I thought that the real investment is in stocks real estate mm. and I realized that these are just instruments the real investment I heard this from a mentor. If you're earning less than 100,000 pesos a month, you better not invest in stocks real estate. You better first invest in here. Why? Because when you invest in your knowledge, you can earn times 10, 20 times more because of your earning capacity. So from then, I, 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 I told myself, I asked myself, why am I not successful yet? What if I, takes, I do something different? And that's where I invested in all these programs. And honestly, I, you know, I've earned more than 20 times more yeah, yeah. from it. You, you mentioned a million here. <laughs> I'm going to point that out. But were you, th those were built up, right? Like yeah. I, I know sales people, they, they sell you this first program, which is a lot cheaper than you upgrade and upgrade and upgrade. So was it that process that you got into that? Or yeah. um, did you just put up 1 million right off from no. the bat? Or was it built up? Okay, 1 million is a total from yeah. like, I started from two years ago. So, it so it's not small. just one month, one million. Yeah, I started yeah. small and then it became bigger. And so every time I earned, instead of saving it, I, mm. I reinvested it in my knowledge. So are you saying that when you took that course, you applied it yep. mainly, right? Of course, you won't <laughs> right, right. get any results if you don't apply it. And you, whatever you learn from it, which is you earn yep. basically, and you reinvest it. Yeah, I take a portion and reinvest it in my education fund. All right. Some people put 10% in the education fund. I put 50% in my education fund. And would you say there's like one secret from the things that he taught you? Or is it like uh, you learned a skill or right. was there a secret? <laughs> okay. This is what I learned. I've bought a lot of courses. And the secret is, there's no secret. All right. Uh, when you I, have to go through that process. The thing is, we sometimes think that he's doing something different. He's doing a secret. And when, so I decided to bought a, a, a lot of courses. And when I look at their courses, we're the same. We're doing the same thing. So I realized wow. that what's different is this. Successful people, even if they receive failures, rejections, discouragements, they still continue. Unsuccessful people quit. And that's my biggest transformation. That's what I learned from all these courses I bought. Actually. Wow. <laughs> I think Joe here is speechless. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, you know, you know me. I'm always like I'm a sponge all the time. I want to learn as much as as I can for this interview. I've I've always said that you know, one advantage of this of bringing people in the podcast is that I can, you know, we, we can get, we, we can get so much. We can get so much more than just you know uh, inviting them for coffee. <laughs> you know, I would agree. Success leaves clues. And, That's true. And I also personally believe that if you meet someone there's like their energy right like pass it on right. <laughs> right. And i can feel the energy here yes from people, so, so so you said now that you know the secret is really execution the secret is really you know just there's no secret basically right? well it's still a secret because people would i mean i it's still a secret because like it's so obvious but you really have Go to do it yeah uh uh, are you still investing now or you're just focusing on like, oh, these are the things I've learned now, so it's time for, or you're still keeping, like putting money on, on your educational fund? Yeah. So until today, I'm still in reinvesting my, uh, my portion of my savings into education because the, one of the reasons, even though there's no secret, when you invest in something and when you realize that you're doing the same thing, you become more confident. Mm. 
You understand what I'm saying? Because if you think you feel stupid and you have to like, ah, I need to really upgrade yeah. now, right? Look, look at this. Um, this is what I learned. For example, you are someone that is is crushing it in the industry, and then I, for the past how many months, I'm thinking you have a secret, and then when I learned from you, I realized you have no secret. So meaning, when I learned that you have no secret, we're doing the same thing. If you can do it, then I can do it. Yeah. So that's what um made me, you know. It, it's like it's like so. I I always see this <laughs> with King Jun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so so funny. In fact, yeah, the, the, the last week and Russell Brunson, yeah, both of you, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. my wife is the one attend who attended. But anyway, it, it it always talk about the the four minute mile, right? Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. That's the, the the analogy for the benefit of those who don't know what the four minute mile is. Um, there's a guy named. Roger Bannister, mm-hmm. who broke the four-minute mile because centuries before that, people actually thought that you cannot run uh, one Faster mile under that. under one under four minutes. Yeah. And then then Roger Bannister four said, miles in one minute. Sorry, four, four miles, miles in one minute. Sorry, thank you. And and Roger Bannister like broke that broke that record. And then after breaking that record, I think just few months later, like ten more, fifteen mm-hmm. more people, mm-hmm. or maybe even thirty more people. Br- did the same, actually did better. Classic of example of a limiting belief, right? right? Right, classic example of limiting belief. And also like what you said, we're in like, if, if you find a mentor who's crushing it already, and if the, the, the thinking of his, if he can do it and we're doing the same thing, then it's just, yeah. is, is it, the thing, just is it thinking, is it a matter of time for you or is it just more of like, what? What do you mean matter like, of time? Would you say like, if he's doing, if we're still, do, we're just doing the same thing and he's crushing it, is it, do you do you think about it like I just need to keep doing this and then I will definitely break that? Mm-hmm. Is right. that is, is that the mindset? Yeah, there's actually two things. No, not all the time. Naman, now when you buy courses, you won't learn anything. No, so sometimes mo- sometimes he may know something that you don't know. That's also one thing I buy courses. But if I know that we're doing the same thing, then that limiting belief just breaks. Just, all right. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So so now like. Right now, um, where does where this is normally Dave's question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Um, where where does like you know from a cash flow standpoint, where does where does your income mostly Maybe come from? Maybe we could start with what is his business. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so we have sorry, to, thank and you, we can go there. Yeah, let, yeah. yeah, you know, what, you explain it as layman as you could. You you, <laughs> For you those said who you don't said know you buy, what, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who does just that. know let's Facebook, you know, yeah. can you explain what? you're actually doing where the money comes from all right so um how do you explain this um i'm 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 sure most of the viewers are very new to this but anyways uh the point is this business right now they advertise through radio tv newspaper and all the traditional advertising platforms they miss one of the what i call the golden era for me which is facebook instagram youtube and all this stuff but you don't have to overwhelm yourself just all the social media i just focus mainly on you on on facebook so the thing is, um, before we think that to have a business, you should have you know, a, an office, a building, and all these kinds of people, rent, inventory. But right now, we can monetize what we know by selling what you call information or digital products. And if you look at school, by the way, what, what is school selling? Are they selling physical products? They're selling information, right? Okay. And, um, yes. Information is their canteen. <laughs> the food, <laughs> their canteen, canteen food. <laughs> I'm kidding. But yeah, so. yeah. So information right now is um, you know, very, very expensive and it's one of the highest industry. And when I share, for example, when you want to learn from me and I share information to you, what do I spend? Okay. Time. Yeah, okay. Time, I spend time. time. So that I won't be able to spend time. I shoot a video right. and then I give it to you. Basically what do I what we're doing now? Right? Yeah. So basically what do I what do I spend? Just share my information. Yeah. yeah. So um, that's basically the point here. Okay. So the thing is this. Um, I believe all of us have past experiences, past struggles, and past successes. And success doesn't mean an overall success. Success is just achieving small goals. And for example, if you're a person where you had the vision to be fit and you were you know, a little chubby, and a little obese before and you thought it was impossible and then you were able to break that false belief and be able to have that dream body a lot of people right now (laughs) just an example a lot of people right now also has the same situation as you so if you just want to share that information to them it's really a breakthrough for them so um, two things. First is, if you don't have a business, we help people start their own internet business by sharing what they know. 
It, you, they may sell both digital products or they can also sell what you call physical products. And when people have their own businesses as well, I'll show them how they can scale their business using you know, internet marketing, using um, automation, using follow-up, using ads. Because at the end of the day, internet marketing is like this. It's we're building like a, um, how do you call this? Um, ATM machine or we're building, how do you call that? Kanang, kanang ko, kan sa Vending machine, yeah. So meaning every time I put 1,000 in, 2,000 pesos should come back out. So if that would be the case, my question is, how many 1,000 pesos would you put in? Infinite. Yeah. Infinite. As much as you can. So if you build that system, if you build that process, you can put as you can put 100,000, 200,000. Right? Yes, that's right. So that's what I'm doing. You're that's what I teach. That's a very good analogy because uh, we always complicate, you know, internet marketing. And this one's uh, mainly, uh, I'll, I'll call it the, the sales funnel, right? right so right. this is, if you've, we've mentioned Russell Brunson, Peng Joon. So those people are masters in... And Fibolim. <laughs> and Fibolim. <laughs> so sales funnel. So maybe we could... Uh, so that's... You've just explained what sales funnel is. Right. Uh, you know, building your list, whatever. So now, like, we can lead to your question. Like, so how the... So it's like the vending machine that's very explained, right? So... Right. I don't know. Like, how, how was your... So uh, my, my question is like, um, so now are, are you mainly doing that or are... Do you have other streams of income that you're mm -hmm. working on? Okay. So in online marketing, there's a lot of what you call sub-niches mm. okay. you can engage in. Right now, I have multiple streams of income, but only under the main niche, which is online marketing. I see. So yeah. under online marketing, I don't know if um, the audience knows this, but there's sub-niches like, for, for example, publishing. So you're selling information for those. Right? Yes. And also physical products as well, like for example, drop shipping. So... There's a lot of sub niches under that, but what I suggest to people, because because most of us we have this what you call um, shiny object syndrome, meaning yes, yes. if there's something shiny, we get to grab that, and we're and we, if we feel struggle, we look for another shiny object and grab this Always opportunity. Yeah. So my suggestion is what you um, f just implement focus, mm. meaning finish one course until successful. Because when I had this initial success, I tried venturing all these sub niches. And eventually, I wasn't able to focus and all of them failed. Right. So I went back to my main business, my main passion, my main drive and did that. I went all in. So yeah. that's my suggestion. Do one thing first and that's the time to diversify when it's stable already. All right. So uh, you've mentioned uh, digital products, right? Have you personally created your mm -hmm. own digital product or you know, are you using affiliate marketing as well? Yeah, right. I have my own digital product. Um, what are these? Are these courses? Or, yeah, these yeah. courses. So, um, before I made small digital products. Right now, I made it into one. So I I call it a six week um, uh, how do you call this mentorship program? Yeah. Okay. So the thing is, I just recently announced to my team. I re how do you call it, remodeled my program. Why? I I've had like a hundred plus plus students who went my program, who went to my program, and I realized the number one reason why they don't succeed is because they don't finish my program. Because they know you need to buy something and, object, and right? the first week and then, okay, I'm tired. I, I won't finish it. Yeah. So I wanted to remodel it. I wanted them to become successful. So what I did, I told them that attend my three-day live event. So instead of selling just a program, I wanted them to attend my three-day live event. So in the three-day live event, you have no choice. You have to sit down and finish until I'm done. Yeah. So yeah, that's for the beauty me, of live events, yep. right? Right, right. So yep, um, I have these live events as well. So, so you're that, you're you're doing, cause cause I know like Dave attended your yeah, one of your training. Yeah, is that leading to the live event or? Oh, yeah. How does that fit to this whole? It's like a know. physical sales funnel now, right? Yeah, right. So, so what I do right now so is uh, I realize I have this passion in speaking. Uh, yeah, because yeah, for, the really past, <laughs> for the past for the past years, you know, doing internet marketing, you were under behind the screen, and you can even earn money while no one knows you. So I wanted to venture in online marketing, but I wanted to be seen by people. So, um, how they call this? I conduct seminars all over the country, provinces, because you know, I realized, kasi, like people when when international mentors come to Manila, they just, they, they just stay in Manila. Right? They don't go to Davao and CDO and Jensan and all these provinces. And I wanted to be the bridge to share it to other provinces in the Philippines as well. So um, that's my reason. That's why almost every week, 
I conduct yeah, seminars every weekend in all these provinces. And uh, I share for around two hour seminar. I share to them what is online marketing, the basics, how they can skill the business, how can they how they can start the business. And eventually a half day seminar is not enough for them to succeed. So I share to them my I open to them my three day live event where I show them step by step, move by move on how I started the business and how they can scale their business and its whole day. And uh, that's what I do right now. And from there So would yeah. it be a challenge? Oh, sorry for cutting yeah. you out. Like uh, would it be a challenge because if you do it in let's say it's General Santos yeah. and you pitch their two hour event yep. basically and you have a three day event, would it be in somewhere else or would it be focused on General Santos? All right. So um it's it's in Cebu, the live right, event. So that's it, right? Because I'm I'm a little mad of Manila because we always fly to Manila. Why not let them yeah, come here from yeah. Cebu? But anyways, um we have a we have a promos which will be announced on the seminars that will you know, I also travel to other provinces as well, as, as well but uh, most of the time it will be in, you know, Cebu, Davao, or so Manila. fly here. Yep, yep. So that's their yeah. another investment. But if there's a lot of uh, attendees or somewhere um, in, in, for example, in Jensan, I can fly there as well. Mm. It will depend, case to case basis. Okay. All right. My, my next question is when did you start, um, you know, your, your, your seminars, your two hour seminars? And when, when, did, when did you start that? Like this year or? Yeah. Right. I started it just this year. This year. Um early early 2018. But what happened is it was really a breakthrough for me because I just tried to do a seminar and in my first seminar I spent around nearly twenty thousand pesos on ads and only one person attended. Wow. So what happened? What what, um, what went wrong? I, I don't know. I, I, I thought this this just wasn't for me. Uh so I stopped for a month and uh you know did drop shipping and all this stuff and I told myself, what's what's really the purpose of life? So I told myself, okay, I'll conduct another seminar. It's okay for me to lose money since this is what I love. So I did it again. And eventually, you know, I got like 100 attendees in Cebu. And I spent just around below 20,000. Is it ads. just a, it's just a problem of the target targeting problem? or Yeah. So I think that time, the price was a little high. It was around 1,500, but this was a whole day event. Right. And then what I, what I did is I dropped the price to 250 and uh, people were that started attending it. So that's good. That's good. I think because of the price. Yeah, I, I would like to get into this pricing, right? So like yeah. handling a, like a live event, is it, okay to do it free or have at least a fee at the start okay. or yeah you've mentioned that one five is too high for filipinos so what do you think is a sweet spot yeah so um uh, right now we're doing a little fee because the reason why is we want quality people to be in the seminar room those who can afford mainly right? Oh, I, like even though it's 250 it's just a small investment but you disqualify those who are not really interested because some people you know we when they want to go into seminar they ask for snacks and they ask you know they're they're not really the quality people who want to become successful um the fee qualifies the successful between the unsuccessful the determined between the undetermined people and uh i'm not saying the man the free is also not it's not good and the, the paid is good but it boils down to testing the market mm. because you know um, right now, we are still implementing the free. We haven't tried implementing the free yet. Mm. We want, maybe very, very soon, we will try. How, how, many, how many attended in, in Cebu um, in your last? Oh. My last? That was around, yeah, uh, actually around 180. 180. Uh, yeah, 180. Nice. Okay, so my question is like, you said like, you've always been in the background, right? Because you're, you know, people don't see you and then, now you said I'm I'm gonna venture in to like j just get my physical you know my face out there also not just the content. So my 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 question I guess is like what what gives you, what's the trigger for you and then like did you just did you just say let's organize it? Are you that confident or because uh, you know we the reason we're asking that because it's not a joke to organize an event. And then speak in a crowd of people that doesn't know you, right? Right. So can you just walk us through what's going on in your mind there? How did you process that that task? Okay. When I see my mentors, just Peng Jun and all the other mentors, I can see myself in them. As what I've said, look for mentors that which you resonate with. And I really resonate with him so much 
So I told myself, I want to do that. Okay? I had this all um, objections in my mind. Well, what if it's not profitable? They don't know me. But at the end of the day, it's what I love to do. So I really can say that if you want to, if you love something, you will yeah. do whatever it takes for you to have that, for you to achieve that. So right now, it's not, ready about the money it's really yeah. about doing your passion doing what you love yeah it's like the previous episode we had with isa <laughs> so the, you know the passion is very important right, right? right so also i have a question with since you've been doing online and you know online you can do it on your own yep well live event like if you like in waterfront earlier this this month or last month you have to form a team you can't just do it on your own right yes, so yes. how many people did you, did you hire them one time or was it like uh you know, it's do you have a team already existing? All right. Currently, I have around ten people in my team right now because I want my business to be automated, customer service, and all this video stuff. But usually in events, I just hire freelance on that. Ah, you know, freelance, freelance lang. On the, on the location, yeah. Right. Because For you, in Cebu, I have a team to operate in my business. So this me. ten people are hired by you. Is yes. Hired. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they're doing basically they're doing it part time lang. Mm. Pero there are like in in my company to help. Mm, okay, cool. Yeah. Yes, this is really interesting. Right. So my my next question is: so how did how would you say that your live events were successful, and how did you measure success? Mm -hmm. So my measurement of success is how many after the event they usually approach me, and uh, they tell me that they've learned something, they're very inspired. Mm. And I think for me, that's success. Right. Um, it's the feedback of people. It's the impact you give to the to the world. V very interesting question, Joe, because I, I got a chance to be interviewed by Carlo, actually, just recently. And uh, Why am I not there? <laughs> <laughs> but he's pre he prefers doing it on his, uh, you know, one by one. That's his interview. So he mentioned about the measure of success. Like, it's very personal. You do it, actually, yeah. you are the the one who decides yes. what's your s metrics for success. Yes. So for him, like starting a podcast, which I will link hopefully if the episode is out, uh, it's all about just, you know, he enjoys it for foremost. The money was not an issue, but eventually he maybe will hit the... And I think that's also a measure for success for us because we are doing this out of passion. You know, we Joe and I have our own businesses and we're also super busy and I'm glad that we're all here today but yeah so the Everybody point is, is you know, have, busy, have that passion time. I we guess time, so right. that's, good. that's what will move you forward that's the fuel for you yeah. to move forward no matter what happens yeah. uh, you know, along I just want to share also to insert because I've met a lot of people they say na, I, don't, I don't know what's my passion no? and uh, this is what I learned you will not know what's your passion until you have to try you have to try a lot of things out because Right, for example, in, in a typical um, except drugs, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> in a typical um, uh, situation like me, when uh, after I graduated, a eh, you know, like for example, look for look for jobs and just work there nine to five and repeat the process. Mm -hmm. From that on, you didn't you're not trying a lot of things. You're just trying one thing. So for you to know what you love, the only way for you to know what you love is to try a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So I think that's my advice to people if they want to know what's their passion and. Also, it's not just also about um, doing what you love. It's also loving what you do. Like, for example, right. I, like I, I, I have the passion in speaking and in inspiring people, but I don't like traveling. Okay? I don't want to travel. And, but I need to travel to do what I love. So I, I need to love traveling. You're traveling. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and uh, you, you had, a, you know, you've been doing this for just recently. I would yeah. say, like, it's amazing, right? Like three years or what, right? Yeah, it's so, very fast track. I yeah, I mean, I if he can it. do it, I mean, it's been a common theme in this episode that if he can do it, Fibo can do it, a 23-year-old can do it, you can do it as well. Now, my question is like, you've been, you know, you just graduated perhaps. I don't know if you finished yeah. college. You did I finish did, your did. college. But like, what happened to your friends? Like, you know, not everyone's going to relate to you now Yeah. because you've been doing this and you probably earning so much than them, you know. You what happened? Uh, did you change your crowd? Did you like you know? Yeah. So um, I really believe that environment is better than willpower. Meaning, um, if you want to become successful, you just can't say that I want to become successful. I want to become successful. You have to surround yourself with the with proper the right environment. environment, 
And uh, we're, I'm still friends with my friends before. The thing is, I just spend more, most of my time with people who I want to become mm. or successful people as well. And uh, that's also what differentiates people. Because as what they say, diba, if you surround yourself with five successful people, you will also become the yeah. sixth. So um, that's what I did. That's why I invested in uh, programs and in, and in you know clubs. So mo- sometimes I fly to Manila because my, my so successful friends are in from Manila. I don't really know someone in Cebu that much. Right, that much, right? Yeah, right. so I yeah. really have... You might be I, listening to this. You might be the mm, next one. Yeah. So <laughs> it's really hard. Are. It's really hard to find people like that. It's very, very rare. But if you do find, you have to treasure that... Uh, you know that relationship so that's what i do and uh, it's since it's hard for me to spend time with them i mostly go to youtube and i just imagine i'm in that place you know spending with the time with the successful people all right yeah how did how did you find these guys what were what's your criteria i don't know same birds flock together right yeah, I mean, right, right. But, but what what's what do you have like the same interests or yeah basically like, same they're interest. doing they're doing internet marketing as yeah. well and they're very they're keep, they're, they're crushing it there also in the in the space Sim- simple you just have if you, you you can easily determine if a if if you have the same goal with that person right right like when when you talk to a person and he talks about you know the artistas and all this you know the the new so i i know i i, I don't usually relate with them but if a person just talks to me and asks me what's your business right now or okay, what, right. what what are your investments it's a person that i want to talk with yeah. I'm that's spend that's, time with. that's interesting for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Cool. So you actually have to be the person that pe- the person likes. Also, awesome. it's it's two way. It's not just like you know, please be my mentor, or please be my friend. And yep, right. when you're not, not doing your own assignment, pie. right? <laughs> right yeah. You're not put it what what you put up on the table, right? right? So if you're someone who's like that, you have to be that person first. So educate yourself, learn some books, and I think this is my. Do you have still questions for Emma? So yeah, my, I mean, my take. Yeah, yeah, so go, this is like go. my takeaway already. So, uh, be the person that mentors would actually, you know, pay attention to you, because if you are not that person who, who you know, you don't, you didn't do your assignment, you didn't, have, you don't have anything to put on the table, uh, for them to even notice you. I think that's really crucial for, and yeah, find your own group as well. Like you know, be the sixth person as Phoebe mentioned. For me, it's uh, w- what I like about what you said was. Well, firstly, your backstory uh, is very interesting for all because you're very young and you're very driven. And, you know, I can see the contrast with, with most people and they feel like they have all the time in the world. Yeah. You know, it's like... Maybe they do, maybe they don't, right? That, that's the thing. We don't, the, the idea is you don't really know. But... Um, for you, I can see the, the sense of urgency and, you know, just just focus on doing it. So I'd like that, uh, and, and that's one of the reasons why I want you to be in the show, because I want to I want our community here to to feel that sense of urgency also and you know, be inspired with that. And, you know, um, don't just talk about what you're planning to do, but talk about what you've done and be proud about it. So that that's what I like. You know, I like, I like to talk about stories wherein you've, and this is what b- the big picture is all about, right? We talk about the things that you've accomplished, mm. not the things that you're planning to do because the things that you're planning to do is basically yeah. nothing. <laughs> and, and, and so um, if, if there's one thing I, I got from you, it's always that drive. And I wish a lot of Filipinos um, and the people who listen to this podcast has that. And then, yeah, and I, because we all need that, yeah. yeah. All right, so... We now move on on to our lightning round. round. (laughs) We we can't afford them. (laughs) No, we we have we're we're still looking for the right sound effect for this for the lightning round. But uh, Fibo, this is the time where we ask you five questions, and you can ask it like answer it very quickly. All right. So this the goal is so that people who listen to this podcast will get to know you more. Okay. So the first question is: Do you have a morning routine? Okay. And what is it? All right. So currently, I'm still fixing that morning routine because uh, my friends meditate every morning. Mm. Meaning, they spend 15 to 30 minutes listen to music or just think and feel their body to 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 bring in positive vibes. Yeah. And that's my problem because I really think a lot of a lot of things, worry about things. So currently, I'm practicing a meditation routine every single morning. What do you use? Do you have do you have apps or <clears throat> yeah? Or so background um, music. 
Riff Riff. So I, I forgot the app actually. Um, I there, you can just search on YouTube is and it, then is it uh what's a popular one? I have, it's like, in the tip of my tongue. Yeah, um, it's the, the, the guy from Australia, the one who. Went it's the monk, right? The, the monk, guy. Right? Yeah, yeah. So well, we'll put the link like that, to that app. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really interesting, goodness. but it's paid. You know? It's paid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah but you can search naman on YouTube. Yeah, na yeah. There's a lot of meditation uh, you okay. know, videos there. Why, why is it important for you to establish that routine to meditate? Why? Can you just, like, I know it's cool to meditate, but like, what's the benefit? All right. When you first listen, when I first listen to someone that he meditates, I think he's stupid. I mean, he's, I really saw him meditate, yeah. meaning we were like in a room and then he woke up early and then he was just sitting there and then just, you know, as in literally meditating like a monk. Right. So I told him all about these benefits and he introduced me in meditation and it feels good. Why? Because it brings in the positive, uh, because sometimes when we worry about things, most of our actions are comes from our mind. We worry, right. we do negative things, and from our minds brings in those actions. So when we meditate, we tend to have that sense of appreciation, gratitude, Parity and well. and eliminate all those negativity. So we tend to focus and you know, it's hard for me to explain the reason. So wow. my suggestion is just it's try not it out definitely. First. I mean, it's been proven by science. There's physical improvement actually. But you know we can never see what's unless we crack open our brains right. or something. Uh, but yeah, it's good. a really interesting yeah. topic. I, I suggest we you guys try it out for I think twenty one days or something. And if you have any right. amazing results, please let us know. Comment us on this or tag Fibo on that. Right. All right. right. So next question take, is: Is it Take Ten or something? That's the app or something? No, it, it really depends. No, no, no. The the app name was it Take. 10 oh uh, yeah i think that it that's something it. like that anyway sorry i'm still there uh All right. ne next next question is who or what inspires you okay um who um well as what i've said these mentors when i see them inspiring a lot of people that inspires me because i got this um feeling when i was in my network marketing business and i was able to change lives of many people and it brought me that inspiration. I also want to inspire them as well. And also my parents, they grew up, grew me up as a very good person and I just wanted to give back to them on what they've, you know, what what they gave me sure. when I was very, very young. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so do you consider yourself successful? Mm, yeah, I consider myself successful. As what I said, success is not really the big picture. Yeah. It's achieving your, your daily goals. Sure. And uh, when you do that, you're successful. Because at the end of the day, I cannot share, I cannot tell people, I cannot help them become successful if you yourself are, you know, you're not there. Because it's easier to pull a person up rather than to push the person up. Mm, okay. Exactly. Next question. If you have any books or show or movie or resource, courses, courses or, or that mentors. you think, you know, people will benefit from, what, can you name one or two of them? Okay. Of course, I would recommend my own course or book, you know. Go ahead. Uh, the reason why, it's because most probably if, if I'll be recommending other courses as well, they won't be able to resonate mm -hmm. because that was my problem. So I wanted to reinvent it and, and remodel it in a way that it would resonate to Filipinos. So awesome. um, just maybe this November, December, I'll be launching my physical first physical book, which is Millionaire 22. What I did is I created a ask campaign. I wanted to ask people, you're not successful. You're not yet successful, or you're you 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 haven't achieved your dreams yet because I wanted to know all these different reasons. Right. And in that book, I'll be breaking all these false beliefs so that it's like a breakthrough book for them. So that's my book. So watch that. You can follow me at my page, by the way, Fibolim, uh, at Fibolim. Yeah. So there, I'll be giving daily contents, daily awesome. videos, daily inspirational quotes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, but if you would recommend someone else's, can you recommend like, one more? Recommend one more that's not you, perhaps. Um, like Peng well, Jun of course, <laughs> uh, my my mentor Peng Jun. You can just you can also follow Check him. him out as well. Yeah, really but good, his good courses time. are expensive, so he <laughs> might have a little budget for right. that. <laughs> right. So uh, my my last question is: uh, We have a lot of Filipinos who might be you near know, who wants to earn through online, perhaps. And they're stuck with a nine to five job, or their their only mindset is become an OFW. It's yeah. always greener. It's other side, but for you who's done it here, 
like millionaire at 22 and 22 so you're 23 <laughs> now <laughs> like you know a lot of us are 30s 40s we're still not millionaires so yeah. what are what are your tip or if you have one tip for okay. them okay so um being a millionaire is not really the goal the goal is being happy and uh the thing is if you're happy right now then you've already done it so if you're happy right now, you can be happier as well. Money is just a tool. It's just one thing of the formula. It's not really, really the main thing. So, for example, if you're like me who wants to become a millionaire so that you can share your blessing, because if you want to become a millionaire just so that you can buy your dream house, dream car, and enjoy life, then I don't recommend you, you know, doing it. But if you're, if you're like me who wants to become a millionaire so that you can share your blessings to other people as well, then first of all, you have to go back to the reason and, re and reflect, you should be aware why you haven't achieved it yet. Most of the time, it's because of the false belief. Meaning, I can't do it right now because, because I have to prioritize my family, because I'm not yet rich, because of I don't have the resource. Re resource. Again, it's not about the resource. It's all about the resourcefulness awesome. and how you can achieve it. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I think they resonate on that. Right? Yeah, Last I question. love that quote. Next question is the most difficult question in, in the I lightning round. A bit about it. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, if you want to be found online or offline, where can people find you? Where's the, what's the best way to, to get in touch with you? All right. Um, on Facebook, you can just search me on Fibo Lim. Instagram, Fibo Lim. And also on YouTube, Fibo Lim. And uh, you can visit my site at FiboLim.com. Awesome. Fibo, thank you so much for, for gracing us with your, you know, being, being here, guesting, and talking about your story and your drive. We love it. I hope, you know, we, we, we're inspired. And yeah. I hope our guests are, you know, feel the same way as we do also because we, we're so much inspired and pumped up with, with, with what you shared to us. All right. And so much cuttable quotes also for the ep episode. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm just going to, like, you know, ambush him with, you might want to give us, like, uh, an affiliate uh, link for your yeah. course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, perhaps yeah, perhaps yeah. our listeners might be able to like, check it out. I like out. how you think, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just applying what I learned from everyone. Awesome. But yeah, I so like if you, you have think, this, uh, check his course and we, maybe we will give you a link and all of those will be uh, in Finish. our show notes page. That's the big picture that page slash episode, episode 35, 35 and you'll find pictures of Fibo if you if you like his smile and I'll, we'll add it there. <laughs> <laughs> Some quotes as well and of, of course other resources. So, awesome. So, guys, thank you so much for for being here with us. This is our third uh, live, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third live overall. The, the overall, second the, recording today. The episode will be uh, posted pretty soon. We're we're way ahead, but live is like in the now. So, yeah, check our page from time to time because we're gonna do this as frequently as we can. And thank you so much for your attention. We love you and. We just, we just really appreciate the time. We're here in Mizanin Cafe. We're grateful. And this is a really cold place. And very, they, they quieted the music for us. Thank you so much, guys. And right. so um, with that, this is Joe. This is Dave. And, and this is Fibo. Fibo. We're signing, signing off. off.